Hello my friends and welcome back to our continuing blind let's play It's Attorney Dual Destinies for the PS5. My name is The Flightless Bird, this is your story based gaming channel and today we start day one trial in the case of Turnabout Academy where a lot of stuff is going on and there's a lot of weirdness. There's a mock mock trial which apparently reflected the previous, well not the previous, but apparently reflected the current murder case. And it's, it's a little bit confusing. It, it does seem like they have a main suspect being uh, Miss Juniper Woods, who we know did not do it. And that's kind of a, that's kind of a weird thing about this case is we know Juniper Woods didn't do it because we already found out that she was proven not guilty because of the beginning case. So let's recap so far. This game has an introductory case where they tell us the killer. We know the killer is the bomb guy. Then the second case, they tell us the killer again. And so there's very little mystery there. And then the third game, they, I'm sorry, the third case, they tell us not who the killer is, but the fact that the suspected killer is innocent. It's a really weird, it's a really weird way of telling a story. But I did enjoy the previous case, despite its, despite this fact. So maybe I'll really enjoy this case too. Besides, I don't know who did it. I mean, he looks guilty. He could be guilty. Uh, he, uh, she could be guilty. I mean, there's just a lot of people on this cast. Uh, he could be guilty. And because there's a lot of people on this cast, it's very hard to pin down who might have done it. So let's dive into it, shall we? I hope you all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. Sorry about my voice. I've been really sick and my voice has not fully returned to me. So if I sound a little bit off today, that's probably why. October 25th, 9.47 a.m. District Court to Fenton Lobby number three. Ugh, my butterflies have butterflies in their stomach. So what's it like to have your very own case for the first time? My heart hasn't raced this fast since I ran the full marathon last year. If it keeps up, you might get a lawyer's high. You know, like a runner's high. I don't even know what that is. Relax, everyone's nervous the first time. So my fears weren't unfounded. After all, today's prosecutor is so terribly brutal and willing to use any means necessary to win the conviction. Did I give him another voice? Like every single episode he's just gonna have a different voice, I guess. There's that. The end justifies the means cuts up again. Now that has come to this. We have no choice but to fight fire with fire. The end justifies the means. I wish you stopped saying that. That's your method, Professor. I'm going to defend Juniper in my own way. But Miss Sykes, just yesterday you told me. As a lawyer, what is it that you treasure beyond all else? Heh <laughs> that's an easy one, Professor. Seek it justice for my client. But if this trial proceeds in the same manner and ends in the same way as the mock trial, would you not lose everything you've worked so hard to gain? Well, I'll just have to make sure that doesn't happen then, won't I? My, but aren't you a stubborn one? Well, I suppose you'll have to learn of your own inefficacy the hard way. Grr. Forgive me, Professor Means, but can we just leave it at that? Oh dear, please forgive me. It's just I wish to protect Juniper by any means I can. I do too, but you know, I'm starting to think that maybe he's the killer. And the reason he's a killer is because the ends justify the means. What is the end? They're trying, he's trying to get rid of her. Why is he trying to get rid of her? Because there's something going on in the academy where she and him are in some sort of tete-la-tete. -tete. Is that the right word, phrase? I don't know, I'm not feeling well. Anyway, 
Uh, yeah, they're, they're in some sort of uh, back and forth. And he believes... It, oh, wait. The back and forth is between the philosophy of the school. He believes in any means necessary. She doesn't. So therefore, he had her killed in order to allow for his philosophy to become dominant. After all, the ends justify the means, right? And he also had access. He also had access to Juniper's script. So he very well could have known what was going to happen in the mock trial because he approved of it. So I'm just starting to think that maybe he's the guilty one here. Granted, this idea may become maybe coming from a lot of Tynal and uh, Advil. So maybe my head is just insanely out of whack. <laughs> Who knows? Tomorrow, I may not even, I, I may not even remember saying this, this theory. <laughs> I do too, but... Now, if you would excuse me... Uh, thanks to him, I'm feeling even more pressure than before. Don't let it get to you, Athena. And don't forget to keep smiling. I'll be fine. And I haven't forgotten what Mr. Wright said. The worst at times are when Lois had to face the biggest smiles. Or force the biggest smiles. The trial is about to begin. I'll show you the courtroom if you please. Apollo, I'm counting on you to support Athena this time. Okay, Mr. Wright, leave it to me. That's right, I have Apollo to back me up. Junior's face rests in my hands. I won't rest until she walks free. October 25th, 10 o'clock AM. District Court, courtroom number four. I love how the trials begin. Day one, court is now in session. All rise. Court is now in session the trial of Juniper Woods. Uh, Athena Sykes, the defense team that is ready, your honor. That didn't sound very confident. <laughs> you sure you're okay? I'll, I'll be fine. Hey, <laughs> your baldness. I know, I know. As usual, you really want me to live the opening statement, you lazy punk. Ugh, I mean, you brilliant prosecutor. The case is crystal clear. I see no need to explicate it any further. Now, summon the witness. Uh, the debts. <sighs> is there something the matter? Please do share your baldness. Whatever gave you that idea? Bailiff, please call in our first witness before this guy kills me or the bird lands on my head again. And now we don't even get an opening statement. Detective Fulbright, he and Prosecutor Blackwell have become quite the team. <sighs> All right, the case brief, leave it to me. Yes, let the detective in charge, everyone's favorite friend of justice, explain. What was that just now? It's like here, Blackwell are totally in sync. <laughs> well, I don't think they're capable of mind melding if that's what you're thinking. All right, Detective Fulbright, would you please explain the case to the court? Professor Court's body was discovered on October 24th at approximately 2.30 p.m. She was murdered with this all that I have here. The victim's blood and the defendant's prints were both discovered on it. All added to the court record, the weapon used to murder Constance Court. Her blood was found on it along with Junie's fingerprints. <laughs> Eek! Court's autopsy report added to the court record. It should have said, Court's autopsy report flown in to the court record. That would have been great. Our uh, estimated time of death between 6 to 8 p.m. Cause of death, blood loss from a deep stab wound in the victim's side. Wow, that bird can deliver evidence too? Blackwell has trained him well. Maybe Blackwell should train it not to mess up people's hair while it's at it. <laughs> Moving right along. 
The body was discovered on the outdoor stage, although no blood was found there. Poo poo poo! A body has been discovered! However, we detected traces of a massive amount of blood in the third room, floor art room. In short, the murder took place in the art room. So then the body haven't moved from the art room to the stage? Precisely, and there is one more piece of irrefutable evidence. A recording made by a tape recorder that a school paper reporter hid in the art room. It captured a female voice screaming, You're a goner! Uh, what's this? Yes, it's recording. Must be from that tape recorder Miriam mentioned. But why is this the first report of a death threat at the moment of a murder? Shh, silence, please. I would like to play the tape for you now. Lots of dots. You're a goner. It's not much to go on. Mmm, it is quite hard to hear. But the voice does sound female. Tape recorder added to the court record. Used by Miriam to secretly record the conversation art room. A woman can be heard shining, you're a goner. The noise and the volume of the voice have made the voice print analysis all but impossible. Well then, you haven't identified the voices belonging to the defendant? Not so fast. After all, voice print analysis isn't everything. The victim was killed at night, then discovered in the afternoon the next day. The question is, when was the body moved? <sighs> oh, oh, I know. Could have been moved in the middle of the night when no one was around. Sorry, but no. The campus was full of students that morning. However, no one reported seeing a body. That means the body was moved sometime before the mock trial when all the students and faculty were gathered in the lecture hall and the rest of the campus was empty. It was during this time that Hugh O'Connor, one of the mock trial participants, found the body. So the prosecution heard about Hugh seeing the body. Wait one moment. While well, the students and faculty were gathering in the lecture hall, then there wouldn't have been anyone who could have moved the body. Ha ha ha! Have no fear, for there's always an exception. An exception? The three mock trial participants were standing in an individual dressing rooms. They were the only ones who had free access to the desert campus before the mock trial. What? Well then that would mean... What would that mean? <laughs> Those three students were the only ones who could have moved the body. Injustice we trust! I don't like where this is headed, Athena. Me neither. And by those three, I mean... Hugh O'Connor, Robin Newman, and Juniper Woods! I knew it. Please, Detective Fulbright. Don't say what I think I'm about to say. Injustice we trust. I take it everyone understands now. The voice believed to be that to the murderer was female. And the other two are males and she's the only female, right? And out of the three people who could have moved the body, just one is a girl. That leaves the defendant, Juniper Woods, as the only possibility. No! Impressive. He has you on the ropes even before any cross-examinations. You could at least be 10 to be upset for me. <laughs> A splendid job, Fulbright. That could not be any clearer. Feel free to anticipate a salary raise next month. Oh ho, ha ha ha! I don't do this for the money, it's all about justice! Injustice we trust! Huh. Not only a half wit, but a perennial stick in the mud you are. I guess neither the carrot nor the stick works on Detective Fulbright. 
Now, Bailiff, please bring our next witness to the stand. Oh, God, not her. <sighs> so, our first witness is a cardboard box. <laughs> Self mode deactivated. Oh my, the box is hands. Oh my god. Smile, your honor. S uh, what the dickens? I just had my picture taken. Miriam Scatterpot, senior at the Legal Academy. I'm a reporter on the judge course. Juniper's been a bad, bad girl. I'll tell you all about the crimes. Uh, Money ask whether you could come out of that box. How will I get any more scoops if I blow my cover? So, the answer is no. After all, covert action is an undercover reporter's bread and butter. Hmm, but testimony from a faceless witness is highly irregular. A former ninja I met in the clink said that exposing those who work in the shadows is to pass the death sentence upon them. Oh my, I never thought of it that way. Very well, if it would spare life, I'll make a special exception this time. A former ninja in prison? Holy Shinto! How can they just believe this sort of cock? <laughs> Holy Shinto. <laughs> now your testimony, please. Oh, but take care not to reveal your face. The similarity of the case in the script. The murder happened exactly like Juniper's mock trial script. Up until the mock trial began, only Professor Court and Juniper knew the script's content. But Professor Court's sudden decision not to use the script sparked Juniper's murderous rage. Juniper has to be the killer. She has a motive, and the murder is just like her script. The murder is just like her script? A uh, script? <clears throat> Could such a thing be true? Compare her script with the murder case and crime scene photos, and then you'll see. This is so simple. Even an ape posing as a decrepit old judge could understand. Only the victim and the defendant were privy on the script. Ergo, the defendant is the killer. Furthermore, in the art room where the crime supposedly occurred, this witness script, along with an envelope on which Hughes was written, were found. This proves the accursed script had been rejected the day before the mock trial. She pressed the victim to use her script. An argument ensued, and then the fatal stabbing. Go, oh, that makes perfect sense. What now? Prosecutor Blackwell has all his ducks lined up in a row. He's really on a roll now. Ugh, he's like a pit bull once it sticks its teeth into you. How dare she! My script had it all. A bum rap and phony evidence, grudges, and betrayals. Hmm, I trust the defense is ready to cross-examine the witness. No, no problem. I mean, uh, yes, I I'm ready, I, I think. Time to find a hole in her testimony and unbox the truth. <laughs> I've seen it done over and over. I know I can do this. Really? You've only seen it a few times, actually. Cross-examination, the similarity of the case in the script. The murder happened exactly like Juniper's mock trial script. There must be places where the script and the case diverge. Cock, cock! 
Don't sweat the details. That kind of stress will give you weakness. I'm not worried. My skin is as fair as silk. Objection. Hmm. Indeed, you are quite fair. Fairly desperate. <laughs> Objection. What did you just say? Ah ha ha! Black girl will really turn that one around on you. Tess, who's siding you on? Hurry up and think of a clever comeback. Whoa, easy there, Athena. Now, you listen to me. The two cases do, indeed, have their differences. For one, the stage hadn't yet been erected in the mock trial script. And in the actual case, there were signs indicating the victim's wrists had been bound. Not to mention the tracksuit, right? It's a different color. But such differences pale in comparison to the host of similarities. In any event, replicating the crime without knowledge of the script is an impossibility. Hmm. Looks like I won't be past this off as a coincidence. Sss. What a total burn. Then again, why don't you pawn of words? Up until the mock trial began, only Professor Gord and Juniper knew the script's content. Somebody could have stolen a peek beforehand. S I don't think so. I mean, I tried any number of times. Shame on you, Miriam. But that crafty she-devil, Juniper, has eyes in the back of her head. What chance does your average person have if an undercover reporter like me failed? Interesting point. Still, Miss Scudderbutt, won't you get in trouble later for admitting to such underhanded tactics? Why, you? I played entrapment! <laughs> How is it blurting out your own crime entrapment? Cock, cock! But you haven't scooped me yet. They were all set to use Juniper's script. But Professor Court's sudden decision not to use the script sparked Juniper's murderous rage. How do you know that Professor Court wasn't going to use her script? Ha! Huh. There in the art room where the hideous crime took place. An envelope marked use and Miriam Scudderbutt scripts were found. Evidently, the script that was going to be used belonged to the girl on the box over there. S it's only natural that my script would be accepted and hers rejected. I introduce all sorts of brand new concepts, including bribery and fake evidence. It was a cunning edge script portraying a courtroom battle in the dark age of the law. I can't help but feel that Professor Court went out of her way not to use it. But Juniper, she used some devious, underhanded tactics to get her script chosen. That's why her script and not my masterpiece were used in the mock trial. How's that for an explanation? Juniper has to be the killer. She has a motive. And the murder is just like her skipped. Hold it. Anyone who saw the mock trial could have created the crime. After they saw the mock trial, they could have easily staged a body just like the script. Objection! Hmm. Wary is a trial which puts Hark against Canary. Objection. What did you just say? Ha ha ha, if he's so wary, you should try home thinking less. I bet that'd save him some energy. <laughs> this is no time for your jokes, Apollo. He just called me a Canary. Don't let me get to you. At least Canaries pick up all things quickly, just like you. I shan't repeat myself. So listen carefully, Sykes Dino. You, O'Connor, discover the body before the mock trial began. 
How could one state a body as if it was in the script before anyone knew its contents? Gah, that's right. Do you even fathom the intricacies that go into staging a crime scene? No, I think not. You have the rudimentary mind of an elementary school child. Elementary school? Reporter's testimony throws attorney Athena Sykes for loop. The perfect caption. Oh, marvelous. A photo in the newspaper is just a thing to boost your brain. In a school paper? Seriously? I believe you passed the witness more than enough, Miss Sykes. Huh. Now, do you see how clear-cut my case is? Take it now, and in that fair, desperate mind of yours. Etch it deep, so that you may never forget. No, no. No! Even my arguments get thrown back in my face. It wasn't supposed to be like this. What am I going to do? Athena. You should just about have all the answers you've been looking for now. Huh? Think about it this way. If the killer knew the details of the mock trial, would they really commit the crime in the exact same way? I don't follow. Try to place yourself in the killer's shoes. I bet you'll discover an inconsistency if you do. Ah, I get it. Thanks, Apollo. Miss Scudderbutt, just so we're clear, you're claiming... That the killer intentionally made the crime scene look just as it was in the script? And that it is beyond the shadow of a doubt, not a coincidence. Is that correct? No, duh. After all, it's just more evidence of Juniper's evil she-devil ways. Objection! Cock, cock! What did I say? What did I say? Our client made the crime scene look just like the script, knowing something only to her. That would not be just foolhardy, but completely irrational. What do you mean? Yes, Miss Sykes. Please tell this court what you mean by irrational. It wouldn't make any sense that you need to mimic her own script on purpose, because it would... Uh, make her the culprit. The murder scene was the same as it was in the mock trial script. That in itself is irrational. Cock, cock, cock! What's wrong with them being the same? Uh, yes, Miss Sykes. Can you explain what you mean? Okay, let's say for argument's sake that Miss Woods is a killer. If so, then. What reason would she have to intentionally make the exact actual murder member her own script? Well, that's easy. She was submitting that she was the... Ah! That's right. If she had really done that, it would have been like proclaiming to the world that she was the killer. So what we actually have here is evidence of someone trying to flame our client. Actually, if you want to be really devious, Pretending that uh, setting up the crime scene exactly like was in your script to make it seem like you're not that stupid to throw people off your trail would be like 4D chess, right? <laughs> cock, 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 cock. The body was found the day of the mock trial. In short, the details were revealed. So it would be completely inconceivable for the murder to go exactly like the script. Ka ka ka! Don't let it go to your head just yet. Objection. Hmm. It would seem Justice Dono's comrade in arms has finally drawn her sword. However, the blade is dull and it shall remain so until you master its use. E enough with the stupid sword metaphors already. There is a perfectly good reason for the inconsistency of which you speak. A reason? What reason? Must I spell out everything? Hmm. You are what people today call high maintenance. 
The accused had intended to stop the mock trial, and in that event, nary a soul would have been the wiser to the similarities of the case and the script. Objection. No, the mock trial was only stopped after the body was accidentally discovered. Objection. Ah, uh, our witness here had also discovered the body. In fact, she was led to our dearly departed professor by the accused herself. What? Miss Scudabot saw the body too? Precisely. And with the discovery of the body, the mock trial ought to have been cancelled. Wait, so you didn't call the police? Nope. I kept a secret from my big scoop. You can't do that. Yeah, that's really... Yeah, you can't do that. Huh. I made her pay long and hard penance for her sin. Did I not, my little box top? Cock cock! Compared to the work of a work correspondent, the sheer terror of that was... Arg! Jeez, I wonder what the twist is him I did to her. Block off all the holes in a box? And spin her like a top while Detective Fulbright cackled in delight? <laughs> That's amazing. That sounds more nauseating than scary. Enough gibbering. Witness, continue your testimony. S sure, Mr. Samurai. I'm ready to finish off that she-devil. What the Scuttlebutt saw. I snuck into Juniper's dressing room while everyone was in the lecture hall. Juniper had changed into a stage costume. I asked her, what are you doing? When suddenly she fled into the hallway as if she wanted me to follow her. I followed her all the way to Professor Court's body. She led me right to it. I'm positive it was Juniper, because she was wearing the costume that she had made. Why, you jumped to that quick. Why did you withhold such key testimony? Cock! Well, what's that supposed to mean? Uh, Athena, you haven't even started your cross-examination. I know, but her testimony puts her to her being as a potential suspect. Well, I don't think Prosecutor Blackwell is. No, wait. I bet he's already thought of that. The witness left the lecture hall to sneak into Miss Wood's room before the mock trial. That means she, too, could have moved the victim's body. Cack! The prosecution's claim no longer has any ground to stand on. Help! Now, now. No need to ruffle your own feathers, so... When you squeak like a little brat, it agitates Taka. Do you want him to peck your eyes out? No thanks. <laughs> I was witching who talk. You listen here. The witness has a perfectly good alibi. Oh yeah, I do. Around the estimated time of death? I was at undercover reporter class. It's right near my home. Undercover reporter class? The proverbial bug has been pulled from under you. The witness could not be the killer. The defense must look before leaping. At least make sure the bug's secured to the floor. I try to warn you. Oh. Well, there ends the cross-examination. Let's allow the witness to step down. Huh? No, no, wait, wait a minute. The defense has no right to cross-examine the witness after that little spectacle. For whatever a man is sowing, this he will also reap. Ugh, why can't he say you reap what you sow? Hmm, <laughs> very well. The cross-examination is over, I suppose the witness may go home. Perhaps spend some time in the lovely box that we covered from today's stressful event. Psst. Don't you worry about me, your honor. 
there's no rest for the wicked or journalists either. My third eye is always eyeing a scoop. She's always eyeing a scoop. S well, back to the trenches. Bye bye. So fast, Miss Scuttlebutt. Uh, Apollo, there's just one thing I'd like to ask. Did you take a picture of the Vixel's body? And if not, why not? I, well, that is. No, I, I didn't take one. Really? Well, that's strange. I mean, you take a picture of everything. Why would you take a picture if you're always eyeing a scoop? Did you or did you really see the victim's body? Cock cock! Uh, it's not like I uh, actually saw it, saw it, but. What the devil? Did you hear that, Your Honor? The witness didn't actually see the body. That completely overturns the prosecution's claim that the witness was led to it. Justice, don't know. You dare bear steel at me again. Nice try, poor wonder. So what if I didn't see the body? The fact remains that Juniper led me there. Feast your eyes on this. What exactly am I looking at here? It's a crucial moment forever frozen in time by my third eye. A photo clearly showing Juniper Woods. I don't think this clearly shows anything. Cock! Why did you not tell me of this? It's a shocking scoop. I was saving for just the right moment. And that would be now, right here in court. Surprise! Cock! What do I do? What do I do? All journalists keep their scoops secret until the right moment. She's pretty brave hiding it from Blackpool like that. Or pretty stupid. Well, this is an unexpected turn. Um, Athena, about this picture. See how it only shows the back of the subject? Ah, so then. Right, who knows why this photo shows Juniper in the first place? Objection! Huh, a completely irrelevant point. What is irrelevant here? Is there was someone who did try to lead the witness to the body? Take a gander at this the route by which the accused escaped. The witness pursued the accursed this way after she fled the dressing room. The accused descended to the first floor and exited to the quad. Then what, Carton Cretin? Carton Cretin? Wow. Then I tripped and fell, caught my knee on my own box. She stayed under a box even while running after someone? Sounds difficult. Recall that the body was already there, for Hugh O'Connor had already seen it. She was trying to show someone the body because she wanted to stop the mock trial. Heard. But if the facts are changed, that's all the more reason to cross-examine the witness. Hmm, the defense has a point there. Very well, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Huh. It seems Justice Dono has saved your pretty little hide, Missy. For now, at least. Ooh, guess I pulled that out of somehow. Thanks, Apollo. You're a lifesaver. Incidentally, my compliments to the witness for a very fine box. It's Primo Cardboard. Leveling selected from among many. I like how her eyes dance. That's funny. Fact! Tell another lie or hide another fact from me. 
and I shall put it to the torch. Cack, cack! But please, anything but that. I think it would be more eco-friendly to recycle it, but that's just me. <laughs> All right, Miss Sykes, you may cross-examine the box. I mean, the witness. Well, the box witness. Whatever that thing is. Still not the strangest thing I've seen. I mean, we see a parrot. We see a uh, killer whale. Pretty sure there's a penguin somewhere in there. Anyway, what's good about Sir? I snuck into Juniper's dressing room while everyone was in the lecture hall. You said you stuck in, but why would you do something like that? Because if I got a big scoop on Juniper, her membership would go through the roof. Right now, the newspaper club only has one member, me. The club's history once I'm gone. So, the theme is Harold's brand recognition is a matter of life and death. Her means may be questionable, but her motive is surprisingly sound. Extra, extra. Students seeking the thrills and chills of expose journalism. Report to the club room. This has been a paid advertisement. Anyway, where was I? Huh, never took Miriam for such a go-getter. Juniper had changed into a stage costume. I asked her, what are you doing? Why would she change into that costume? The mock trial was about to begin. How should I know? But if you don't believe me, take a look at this photo. I captured this critical moment, like the gonzo journalistic po that I am. But this only shows a back where everyone was fleeing. You expect me to shoot her face when she's running away from me? I guess you're right, but this doesn't seem to be getting me anywhere. At any rate, as this photo shows, Juniper was in her stage costume. When suddenly she fled into the hallway, as if she wanted me to follow her. That doesn't mean you had to cross chase her. Psst. Call it a journalist's instinct. I see something fishy. I go after it. But you never did catch up to her, did you? A true undercover journalist gets up and dusts herself off when she stumbles. That reminds me, did you fall during the chase when you tripped on your box? A true undercover journalist is always ready to stumble over a great story. Sure, a lot of holes in your story. Or is that just a scum of brain or journalism? A true journalist, an undercover journalist, always prevails against her adversaries. I followed her all the way to Professor Court's body. She led me right to it. What would our client have to gain from leading you there? The accused had employed her self pen script as a manual for murder. Ergo, she had to stop the mock trial before the script's details became public. And that accounts for a desperate attempt to lead our carting in here to the body. Objection. But as we all know, Miss Scudderbutt didn't alert the authorities. And as a result, the mock trial began as scheduled. Objection. The issue here is not whether it was in fact halted. The fact remains that the accused was trying to lead the witness to the body. Does this not show clear intent to halt the marked trial? Ark! I'm, I'm positive it was Juniper because she was wearing the costume that she had made. 
She kept saying that was Junie, but she didn't actually see the body. Oh, that, sorry, that was Athena. Yeah, but Black Hole's assertion takes that into account. So even if I press her on, so even if I press her, I've never seen the body. I won't be able to overturn this testimony. Well, whoever it was that was fleeing, Miriam didn't, never did see their face. So I'm wondering why she thought it was Juniper. Try thinking along that line, see what you come up with. No, I, I think that last thing was actually a press. It was, I missed it, sorry. You say it was a client because the figure you witnessed was wearing a costume. Isn't that a bit simplistic? S it's only as simple and clear cut as a good piece of journalism should be. Huh. Sure, it's simple, but I hardly call it clear cut. That's why I chased her. S okay. I, I think I'm pretty sure the coat was supposed to be green or blue. No, it's supposed to be blue, right? Wait a second. These have constellations throughout. That doesn't. That's just a blue cloak. Objection. Oh yeah. I knew I had something to do with the cloak. Miss Scudabut's sole basis for identified client as figure in this photo is the fact that it shows someone in Miss Wood's stage costume. S well, it is Juniper's costume. So that must be Juniper in it. It's clear cut. No, that's where you're completely mistaken. What? This is this is a design drawing of our client stage costume. Oh my! What a wonderful creation! The constellations are extraordinary. I'm glad you noticed because those stars are precisely what's important here. In the drawing, there are constellations all over the outside of the costume. But there's not a single star on the costume in the photo. Uh oh, well then that means... Uh, what exactly? Your Honor, there were no other blue costumes at the scene. Which leads me to believe... That the figure in the photo was wearing our client's costume inside out. Oh. Hmm, but why would Miss Woods make a mistake like that? Well, it's not really a matter of why, but rather, who made the mistake of putting it on inside out? Kak -kak! Wait, you're not suggesting... That's right, I'm glad you're catching on. The costume designer wouldn't put her own costume on inside out. Sorry, Miss Scudabut, but doesn't believe in you had a scoop when he really did make you feel a failure as a reporter. A, a f failure as a reporter? <laughs> oh, we actually see your face now. Ah! Why, hello, Miss Scudabut. So nice to meet the woman beneath the box. You did see nothing. Objection. Now, I would have you stop right there, Sykes to know. Yeah, and actually, I need to stop as well. I, I try to do as much as I can. I try to make it to the hour, but my throat is killing me. And you have no idea how many times I had to stop to, like, mute my mic today. Hopefully, you don't hear me sounding poorly in the video. Uh, if you do, please forgive me for that, but I, I, I can't continue at the moment. I, I do love you all. Thank you for everything. I, I can't wait to be back here, uh, but for now, I need to call it quits because doing the voices is just killing my voice. Uh, I love you all so very much. Hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day, and until next time, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts, but before we go, Please remember that you matter, and you are brilliant, and you are loved, and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.